Today, we will finish taking a look at the best LEGO Ninjago minifigures from every season. Last time we looked at seasons 1 to 9, so now I want to pick up right where we left off with season 10. Let's go! Will you be my Yang? Yes! Technically, season 10 only had one set, and the best minifigure from it is definitely the Omega. End of story. But it's a bit more complicated than that. Because of course, alongside Season 10 we got Ninjago Legacy, which the sets and minifigures for were incorporated into the show. And since Ninjago Legacy went for 3 years, from 2019 to 2021, I'm going to pick a minifigure from each year to be as fair as I can. In this first year of Ninjago Legacy, we got the Legacy Ninja Suits, Legacy Wu, Legacy Samurai X, Legacy Golden Lloyd, Legacy versions of Whiplash, Knuckle and Cruncher, Legacy versions of Pythor, Spitter and Lasher, and Legacy Stone Scouts, Stone Warriors, and of course, a Legacy Overlord and Garmadon. As much as I love the Legacy version of Pythor, I think the best figure of 2019 has to be the super rare and uncommon Legacy Kai. Just kidding. I've thought long and hard about this pick, and in the end, I actually settled on... Legacy Garmadon. He is very similar to Season 1 Garmadon, only he switches his gunmetal grey helmet for black here, and the face is very similar as well. They recreated him very, very well. And now for 2020, where we got the Legacy 2 versions of the ninja, including a new Samurai X, we got a remade General Kozu, some Legacy Nindroids, and a young version of Lloyd. There isn't a whole lot of options for the 2020 Legacy sets, so I think I'm going to go with young Lloyd for the same reasons as Garmadon. They took an old figure and updated it to look a bit more modern. Even going so far as to give him a new Lloyd's face, but aged down like some kind of alternate universe where the ninja's designs always looked like this. Anyway, 2021 was next and was easily the best year of Ninjago Legacy. We got the Legacy Ghosts, the epic battle suits for the ninja, a brand new suit for Zayn, the Lobo, Jacob and Gravis finally, Legacy versions of Rattler and Mesmo, a Legacy version of Izor, a new version of the Overlord, and all of the ninja, including Wu in the 10th Anniversary Special Editions. And how can we forget all of the figures included in the Ninjago City Gardens, ranging from the long-awaited mechanic to the also long-awaited Lloyd with a bowl cut? Whilst all of the 10th Anniversary figures look great, I think Wu might have to be my favourite. He was the only one that actually got a gold face, strangely, so he actually looks like a statue here. Very cool figure. Whilst Legacy was definitely short-lived, you can't deny that it went out with a bang. I can't believe I lost to a filing cabinet. Next came Season 11, Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu, in June of 2019. And as usual, we got a whole heap of new minifigures, like new ninja suits, a brand new look for Wu, a new character called Akita, the Ice Emperor, Blizzard Warriors, Blizzard Archers, General Vex, Asphira, Char, Pyro Warriors, Pyro Slayers, as well as the Ninja's Forbidden Spinjitsu forms, and three extra special Forbidden Spinjitsu forms, the Lloyd, Kai, Jay, and Zayn, included in the Spinjitsu Slam sets. So there was quite a lot to choose from in Season 11. Even so, it did not take me very long to decide on the clear winner. I have to hand it to Akita, who comes in the Castle of the Forsaken Emperor set. The design on this figure is very good. I love the dual molded hat hair combo and the exclusive cape piece. It is no wonder this figure averages around 58 US dollars now. The lung was as big as an ox and smelled like one too. Oh, what did you just say? Then in January 2020, we got season 12, Prime Empire. We had the Prime Empire suits for all the ninja bar Zane. We got the red visors, the stupid whack rats, Unagami, Scott, Okino, Tsushimi, Harumi, and Avatar suits for all the ninja including the long-awaited and super-hyped Pink Zane. This is another very easy pick, it's Pink Zane. Now this isn't actually Zane, it's just a Prime Empire player using a Zane avatar, but that doesn't matter at all. Just swap out the face here for one of the classic Zane faces, and now you have a fully official Pink Zane. Recreating the iconic scenes from Season 1, Episode 5. And sadly, this was the last time that classic ninja hood piece would appear, finishing after being produced for 22 years. So this piece leaves quite the legacy. Permission to traverse beyond this point. June 2020 was when we got season 13, Master of the Mountain, which didn't actually take place on a mountain, but under it instead. We got all new suits for the ninja dubbed the Hero Armor, as well as a new battle look for Wu, a new character called Princess Vonya, and the bad guys, including the Skull Sorcerer, the Black Skeletons, and the Munts and the Geckles, who strangely weren't even villains in the show. My favourite figure this season is easily the Skull Sorcerer. This is one of the best looking wirebrain villains. The masterpiece is awesome, and I love the green printed details. And the skull of Hazard Durr really completes the menacing look. It's pretty disappointing that we never got him in his regular King Vangelis form. Where's Lloyd? Am 
the other guy. I want to say Nutty Ned. Twitchy Tim. Then at the start of 2021 was season 14, The Island. Yes, I do consider it to be season 14. Let me know in the comments whether you consider it to be a season or not. This season's figures included only jungle outfits for all the ninja and chief mammatus and the other keepers of the island, so not a whole lot of characters this time around. Even though Ronan and Twitchy Tim or even Masako or Clutch Powers would have made good inclusions. Though you have to remember that they were also busy making the last legacy wave this year, which is why we only got four island sets. There isn't a whole lot of choices here, so I think I'm going to have to go with Island Lloyd. Island Lloyd introduced that very cool new hair slash headband piece that has slowly overtaken his previous one. The torso and leg printing is nice and they even gave him a new face print which is very commendable. All of the island suits look good, but Lloyd tends to be my favourite out of most batches of suits. And is practically unsinkable. You know what happens when you call a vessel unsinkable, right? And then in June 2021 we had Season 15, Seabound, which was another wave that felt really condensed, but like I said before, they were stretched thin in 2021. We got scuba suits for all six ninja, and then Kalmar, Benthamar, and Samare guards. Sadly no Trimar or General Gripe, or updated versions of Kai and Nia's parents. I think I'll have to go with Benthamar for Seabound. I don't really love his character in the show, but the minifigure design is pretty cool being sand blue, one of my favourite Lego shades. Also, it's always nice seeing the Lego Batman movie Joker hair recolored. So definitely not the strongest season in terms of minifigure variety. Mumsy? <laughs> and then we reached Ninjago's final season, Crystallized. This time we went from having not a whole lot of figures to being inundated by them. First we got the fugitive suits for all the ninja bar Nia, we got the golden suits for the main four ninja, and then the dragon forms for the main four ninja as well. And also the Oni version of Lloyd, and a new Samurai X suit for Nia. We got Wu in a new outfit, Skylar for the first time in four years, Lil Nelson also for the first time in four years, the Vengestone Warriors, the Crystal King, Pythor, the Mechanic, Asphira, the Skull Sorcerer, Harumi, Mr. F, and finally, Oni form Garmadon, so about 30 new figures give or take. This time I had a really hard time deciding, and it came down to two figures, Pythor and the Crystal King. And since I genuinely couldn't decide, I'm just going to go with both. The Crystal King looks great, with that new mask piece and the extra pair of arms. I am always a sucker for a forearmed figure. The printing is great, and the face print is horrifying and awesome at the same time. The only extra thing I could have asked for here is printing on the teeth. And Pythor, of course, is always awesome. This has to be his most detailed minifigure to date, featuring armor printing all over and the shoulder pads for the first time. Crystallize really did deliver some of the best Ninjago sets and figures. I am Raton! What? I am Raton! Why do bad guys always feel the need to talk in third person? And then we move on to Dragon's Rising Season 1, or Season 17 if you want, since it is basically the same show. Anyway, this season we got new suits for the main six ninja, as well as three new allies for the ninja, Sora, Aaron, and Wildfire. There's also Lord Raz, Empress Beatrix, Rapton, the Imperium Guards, and Imperium Claw Hunters. Also, we got the whole Ninjago City markets, which included a heap of great new and long-awaited figures, like Camille, Cyrus Borg, Misdemeanor, Gal Gossip, Vinnie Folson, Detective Zane, Hound Dog McBrag, and Racer 7, just to name a few. Well, that was more than a few, but you get the point. The best figure has to be Camille, just due to the nature of her. We've been waiting for this figure since 2015 and it finally arrived in 2023. The craziest part of this figure is the fact that they brought back a retired hairpiece just for this one character. It hadn't been seen since 2014 and it hasn't been seen since, so this was truly a once in a blue moon move from LEGO. I do have to give an honourable mention to Aaron though, because his main suit for this season absolutely rocks. So, sometimes I get so desperate I watch Intelligent George, a man who insists the moon is made of donut. <sighs> and now we move on to the most recent Ninjago season, Dragon's Rising Season 2, or Season 18 if you will. I believe this season has the most figures for a single season to date, once again due to the nature of it. Because this is the first time we've gotten sets of one season spread across three waves, in January, March and June or August of 2024 depending on where you live. Okay, brace yourself whilst I give a quick rundown of all the minifigures. <clears throat> 
We got mech pilot suits for all six ninja, climber suits for all six ninja, swath tournament suits for Lloyd, Kai, Cole, Zane, Nia, Aaron, Sora, and Wildfire, an evil version of Jay, an extra super cool mech pilot version of Cole, a master version of Lloyd, a new Wu, Euphrasia, a new Toxin, Mr. Pale, two versions of Cinder, two versions of Jordana, two new versions of Lord Raz, two versions of the Wolf Mask Warriors, the Wolf Clan Guards, the Temple Guard, Rising Dragon Strike suits for Kai, Nia, and Aaron, and a few extra characters in the tournament Temple City. So really an unprecedented amount. And here they all are gathered together. Except for the two figures included in this poly bag which I have yet to build. I really like Master Lloyd and I really like Super Mech Pilot Cole. I also really like Sora's new hairpiece. And of course Lord Raz looks awesome. And Mr. Pal and Tox are incredibly welcome figures. But with all that aside, I think my favourite of all of them has to be Evil J. This figure looks shockingly cool. And no, I haven't seen the leaked part 2 episodes, I'm waiting for their properly release, so I still don't know why Jay is evil here, but his figure just knocks it out of the park. 10 out of 10, Lego. Whoa. But we're still not done yet, we have two sub-themes to go. First is Ninjago Core, which will get out of the way quickly that I'm not a huge fan of. We got new suits for all the ninja and Wu, and the bad guys are Avenged Stone Snakes in Wave 1, and the Bone Warriors in Wave 2. My favourite figure is Core J, because I think his colour scheme rocks, and pale yellow works surprisingly well on J. Case closed. Listen, Lloyd, and friends whose names I don't know. I'm J. It's not a question. And finally, we have the Lego Ninjago movie. Three weeks ago, I assumed the role of a popular horror movie character and forced you to participate in a little game. I asked you to try and guess in the comments what my favourite LEGO Ninjago movie minifigure is, with the hint that it appeared in one of the three biggest sets. I had an overwhelming amount of comments trying to guess, and someone actually got it in the first half an hour, so maybe next time I'll have to make it a bit harder. Anyway, the first person to guess correctly was the real Lloyd Garmadon, who guessed that my favourite figure was Casual Kai, which was indeed correct. So congratulations Lloyd, I can't believe the real life Lloyd Garmadon actually got it. Though I will show on screen everyone else's comments who guessed Casual Kai. I really wasn't expecting that many responses and that many people to actually correctly guess it, so next time I'm definitely making it harder. And thank you to everyone who commented on that last video. That wraps it up for today. Check out part 1 here if you haven't already, and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And let me know in the comments what your favourite Ninjago minifigures are. That's been all for today folks, have a great day and see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,